All right, so we have seen how you can connect to a server and what's in between you and the server. But now let's talk a bit about how your own computer initiates the connection and how it works uh, in programming. So how do you program stuff in C, for example, to send data from your computer to a server? The way you do that is using sockets. And sockets is a really important object in programming. A socket is really a thing that you can send data to. And the socket can be, can be using a lot of different address family, so internet address, so IP address, but also, for example, Bluetooth devices can be connected, you can connect to them using sockets. And it implements a lot of protocols and mainly TCP and UDP. So you are going to use sockets and you're going to first create a socket and then connect the socket to a server by giving your computer the IP address you want to connect to. So for example, on you create a socket, you tell it uh, my socket is going to be of type uh, inet. So internet network, so IP address version four, not version six. And you can say we are going to use a stream. And stream just means you're going to use TCP. And then you can, on, you have created this socket and you can how you can now connect this socket using the connect system call. And this connect system call, you're going to give uh, the IP address and the port number and the, con the socket is going to be connected. And then what's really interesting is once the socket is connected, you have really a file descriptor for your socket. And once you have a file descriptor for your socket, you can just use a regular read or write system call in the same way you would call them for a file. So when you want to read and write from a socket from a file or to a file, it's really extremely effective. And the same way you can do that with a file, you can just like, for example, read from the socket, write to the file and do that over again. And the socket is going to work in the exact same way as a file because it is also a file descriptor. Of course, if the socket disconnects or your computer is lose connection to the internet, you're going to see that your socket gives some errors. But what's really important to remember is that it works in the exact same way as any other file descriptors.